Football is everything. I played football at North Carolina Central University. After playing, I became a football coach at North Carolina Central University. What I enjoy most about football is the camaraderie, um, teammates, um, depending on 10, 11 other guys uh, to get a first down, to score a touchdown, to win games, to win championships. Soon after playing my last game, I just noticed a lot, of, a lot of changes with my body. Losing weight, things of that nature, just feeling tired a lot. I received a phone call from the hospital. Hello? We found out that you have leukemia. And my mind just began to twirl like a tornado, just out of control, like, are you serious? Not me, not, not Quincy. The first call I made was to my mom. That was a that was a call that I won't ever forget. I came home and I just remember sitting there thinking, my child, no mother wants a child to be sick. Yeah, it, it hurt, it hurt a lot. It's just gonna be okay, we're gonna get through this. We're gonna get through this. I never forget when I met Dr. Moore. It was a consultation visit and he and I just talked a lot. He asked a lot of questions about me. Who am I? He was referred to me with a potentially very dangerous problem. The white blood cells in our bloodstream are really mostly our immune system and infection fighting cells. And the normal white blood cell count on average would be around 5,000. My white blood count was over 100,000. Dr. Moore gave me a great game plan in the years to come of competing and fighting against leukemia. He decided to introduce me to Gleevec, which became a very positive drug for me. It basically kept the cancer suppressed. During the interim time, that six year window, I was able to meet a beautiful young lady named Princess and we got married. We have three beautiful kids. A couple of weeks before Christmas, Quincy just started to have a lot of aches and pains. We went to the ER and it was life changing after that. He had shifted from his chronic leukemia to one that was more acute or a more aggressive form of leukemia. I was scared out of my mind. I, di I didn't know what to expect. I didn't know if this thing was to the point where it was going to take over. He's had a great game plan each time he's failed. We went ahead and asked the bone marrow transplant folks to, uh, to see him, and fortunately they were able not only to see him, but go on to transplant. I was a patient on 9200, which is the adult bone marrow transplant unit a very secluded area, a very isolated area. When I first met Quincy, um, there was something about him that I knew was special. Right away, he had a charisma and a connection with our staff. We all drew close to him. Quincy was here for a stem cell transplant. The goal is to get rid of the old, unhealthy cancerous immune system and infuse them with the healthy one. The first one was from my umbilical cord blood transplant. Weight count, still less than 0.1. 30 days later, um, we found out that I, I never engrafted. Um, they didn't work. Um, for whatever reason, you know, it just didn't work. I didn't know, you know, when I would see my kids again or if I would even see them again. We basically told the nurses he needs to see his son. He just needs to see QJ. Quincy Jr. for short. He said, just give me a second with my son. Please just let me be with my son. That was so hard, so emotional. Our rule is that you cannot be under the age of six to come visit a patient. And I knew his son is two years old. That was definitely not in the rules. You could see him starting to get down and starting to be sad. And so it was, you know, the one thing we could do was bring his young son to see him. One of Quincy's fears were, is he going to recognize me? Am I going to scare him? And he didn't. Hey, QJ! Hey, 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 QJ. Hey, buddy. You can just feel the love. That alone gave me the opportunity to say, all right, let's take this up to another level, you know, and let's, let's, let's beat this thing.
The next step was to perform another stem cell transplant, but this time we take a different approach and use my mom. It's not a full match of a transplant, it's just a half match of his mama. You hope that you give him a healthy immune system. This is something that we don't get to do as mothers. We don't get to give our children a second chance. We birth them and we raise them and we pray that they go and, and do the best things that we have taught them to do. But to be able to give him a second chance at life, it was an awesome experience. Mr. Padu, we have your cells here. We're gonna check them against your armband, okay? All right. It's like my mom rebirthing me all over again. Yeah, it is. At that time, that's all I could think about was this has to work because I want him to go home to be with his family. And we did the count again. And then little bit by little bit, we started seeing there was a growth. After receiving the second transplant, uh, stem cells from my mom, things uh, seemed to work a little better this time around. I was able to discharge from 9200 and then make a new home at the Adult Bone Marrow Day Clinic. It's like a day hospital. I'm embraced by another great staff. We go and we have our labs checked every day. Ms. Pearl Robinson, she brings a lot of light to the room. He don't like needles. <laughs> I had a lot of one-on-one -on -one time with my nurse practitioner, Angela Johns. She has a special place in my heart forever. We did have some very low points. I remember clearly it was the day that we knew he had relapsed his disease. After going through two bone marrow transplants, and not knowing what we could do to change the circumstance. And at that time, I really thought he, we had lost him. Once again, the staff had a game plan. Their hearts are huge. Um, they're full of knowledge. Um, they're kind, they're compassionate. Um, and they never say can't. Our patients don't quit. So we can't quit either. The team, for Quincy in particular, was the research team, the research nurses, research doctors, Dr. Shute and Dr. Rosari. They went to bat for him. There was a clinical trial study that was out. Quincy wasn't eligible for the study because his white blood cells were still too high. They were just so persistent, and they got him in the study. And that is what changed his life. They did not give up on Quincy at all. And after a period of time, we noticed that you know, things were on the up and up. Things looked good. The cancer uh, was not traceable. This clinical trial has really, truly saved his life. I feel that there, there's nothing in this world that, that can tear me down um, after going through this fight. A lot of thanks goes to the staff with them having those uh, game plans in place and being proactive with them um, led to, to my success uh, with beating leukemia. The disease uh, can be pretty tough for opponent and uh, you know you always want to come out on top and your score be bigger than the diseases. I think uh, where Quincy is now is a victory for all of us. When I see him now, I look with some pride because I feel like I participated in this. The whole experience is life-affirming. It reaffirms my faith in people and in the people I work with. It is a team sport. There is absolutely no way that one person can, can get that ball down the field. I wish this works for him until he's an old man and he sees little Quincy graduate from college and go on with life. That is my, truly my wish for Quincy.